hot air hangs like a dead man from a white oak tree. People sitting on porches thinking how things used to be. Dark night. It's a dark night. Take a sip of water and collapse the floor. Got any suspects? There were three other students in detention, not much else. You think one of the students killed her? It's possible. Still don't know much. Forensics analysis are analyzing everything. Water. Shame. What a sweet girl. So innocent, so helpless. Right, I gotta get back to the station. Hey, Inspector. Oh, Christ. Shit. Hello, Inspector Valenti. I see we have another body in here. That's the fourth body this week. Jesus H. Christ, do you... We don't even know that, all right? And I don't want to panic the school either. Oh, so it's not a coincidence that the first... that the body is in a similar condition than the first body found. Knox, the other bodies were killed by snake venom. All of them had a snake bite wound on their right arm. This girl has no such marks anywhere on her body. But you have to admit the similarities in the head swirls and the blood clogs on her head. It's pretty much on par with the Cobra killings. I'm just saying, you're full of shit, Knox. Coming in this evening at about 1.30 p.m. this afternoon, a student in detention after school died after consuming a beverage. According to the police reports, three students witnessed the student get up and get a cup of water. No one has been charged, but police are continuing the investigation. Young investigator Edward Polanski suggested the death of the student Ivy Bushel was no accident, although he refuses to comment further at this time. However, according to true crime podcast host Leonard Knox, the features on Ivy Bushel's head resemble a striking similarity to the mysterious Cobra killing. Name so because each of the three victims of the mysterious Cobra killer all have snake bites on their right arm. The police have denied the rumor of the fourth Cobra killer victim since Ivy has no snake bite on her right arm or anywhere else on her body. However, Knox claims that the swellings and blood clots on Ivy's head are similar to the first Cobra victim, Emma Stewart, a college student who was murdered in the bathroom during cheering practice. The police have stated that right now they have no leads to the identity of the Cobra killer. Detective Polanski has stated that he and his department are doing everything they can to track the killer down. Now moving on to the disappearance of Carly Marks, the police have stated that... 
At about 1.30 in the afternoon, Ivy Bushel ingested a cup of water, which would then cause her to collapse on the floor and suffocate. Okay, so what happened? The first thing I investigated was the car stunt that happened outside. Apparently the car was a yellow Corolla, which belonged to a student named Jason Kubrick. I dug a little deeper and found out that Kubrick was involved in some kind of a partnership with a student named Parker Chapman. Kubrick's father works at a Toyota car dealership, so I'd say it's pretty safe to guess where the car came from. But what about Parker Chapman? Well, I investigated his social media profiles and I discovered something interesting. Parker Chapman and Ivy Bushel used to date each other. I then go over Parker's statement from this afternoon. Unfortunately, there was nothing there that supported my theory. Parker is an honor roll student with exceptional grades and has been offered scholarships to Ivy League schools, and, her, and his parents are highly recognized by the school. Not to mention, he doesn't have any classes with Miss Bell, where the murder took place. Although it seems safe to rule Chapman out of the picture, the stupid car stunt outside seems all too suspicious, because why would Cooper crash a car for no reason? It just doesn't seem like him at all. I still was not done with Parker Chapman, so I dug a little more. After about two hours of digging through social media, I discovered the supposed reason for why he broke up with Ivy Bushel. According to this, they had a fight over an affair and he got arrested for domestic assault. After reading this strongly worded post where Parker calls Ivy a cunt, I pretty much felt like I had seen enough and could count Parker as a safe bet. Revenge is a relatively fair motive. Anywho, I get up and grab a coffee and then I get back to work. There were three students in detention with Ivy in Miss Bell's room. Now what about Miss Bell? Could she be the killer? Well, I do some digging into her and I found some surprising details about her personal life. Apparently, she used to be a prostitute. After doing some more digging, I found a post from 2012 that was quite odd. Granted, it was not naked, it was just an odd picture of a cow licking her buttocks. But the strangest part was that Ivy liked the post. Actually, it was the oldest post she liked. So, there may be a motive here, but I'm not sure since the post is 10 years old and I think she's changed quite a bit over the years, so I'm fine ruling her out. Okay, so let's move on to Ashley, an honor roll student with an interest in music. She's heavily involved in orchestra and various musical theater productions, such as Phantom of the Opera and Little Shop of Horrors. After doing some research into Ashley's Facebook page, I found out she and Ivy were actually lab partners in science class. However, the first issue I found with this detail is the simple fact that the class was biology. So does Ashley really have the skills or the knowledge required in order to make a poison as powerful as what the police are calling the UX-40? I don't think so. I also took a look around their friend groups, and in all honesty, they really aren't friends outside of class. No motivation whatsoever. After reading files and looking at evidence my co-workers found, I have to come to the conclusion that Ashley is not the killer. And also, one other factor. If this indeed was my nemesis, the Cobra Killer, I can also say this, Ashley is afraid of snakes. Let's move on to Marsha, a B average student. Marsha is a girl with a lot of social anxiety. She tends to stay off social media and spends a lot of time drawing. Unfortunately for me, with little social media, it leaves me without much to go off of. Luckily, Marsha does have Facebook, however, not a lot of posts, just lots of likes, shares, all the usual stuff. She does have an extensive friend list, and unlike Ashley, Marsha does follow Ivy. I decided to take a look at classes and see if I could find a match throughout the school system, and voila, Marsha has two classes with Ivy, one of them being with Miss Bell for geography. Immediately, this gave me an interesting piece of information. However, I'm not exactly convinced that she killed Ivy, because I also dug up something interesting. I found a TikTok with Ivy and Marsha dancing to the stupid pop song. Kids these days always listening to all the suck me and lick me and bite me and just dancing to it on their stupid Tic Tacs or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, Marsha. I have mixed opinions on her. And finally, Joseph. Joseph Brown is a CD student. One bit of info that was interesting is that his only good grade was an A- in chemistry. This is where my heart began to sink. I dug a little deeper and I found something interesting a phone bill with three names on it, one of them being Joseph Brown. I decided to hack into the data and see what this is. So I load up the phone data retriever and begin to download the data. While this was downloading, I, 
I heat up some instant noodles and some spaghetti sauce and then began to look at the data. I then found out something important. Joseph is actually a drug dealer. He actually has three cell phones all on one plan, which is paid for by his uncle. Each phone has a different name. The other two are clearly fake. After looking at the phones with fake names, I found out that he actually has some small connections to local drug cartels in the county. I then do some research and I actually found something interesting. Ivy Bushel actually got suspended from school for four days for possession of drugs in her locker. It was not five days because she told Mr. Carlson who gave her the drugs, Joseph Brown. Joseph was given ISS for three days. Don't ask me how that works. I dug a little bit into Joseph's social media and I found out another piece to the puzzle. Joseph is actually dating Marsha. I put the pieces together and I turn in my report to the homicide department. I do not know what the police will think, but I do know this. Someone is going to be in dipshit. Sorry for barging in, Mr. Carlson. But we believe we found the people responsible for the death of Ivy Bushel. Would you do us a favor and call Marsha Stewart down to the office? Marsha Stewart? Are you sure? What's your evidence? Sir, we have a warrant for the arrest of Marsha Stewart. Our hands are tied in as is. Now I'm going to ask you one last goddamn time and call Marsha down here right now. Can Marsha Stewart please come to the office at this time? Marsha Stewart. Okay, put her hands behind her back. What? Marsha Stewart, you're under arrest for the murder of Ivy Bushel. Well, I didn't kill Ivy. What? No. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you in the court of law. No, please. I didn't do anything. You have a right to have an attorney present while you are questioned. If you can't afford to hire an attorney, the court will appoint you one at the taxpayer's dollars. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I didn't do anything. Okay, Marsha Stewart is in custody. We're about to go after Brown. Brown? Oh, fuck! <laughs> you have a warrant for your arrest for the murder of Ivy Bushel? Oh, fuck! Can I see your other hand? <sighs> Anything you say or do will be held against you in the court of law. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you. Understand your rights? I'm struggling. You need to get your arm up, sir. <laughs> Stop resisting. Stop trouble. resisting. Alright, on your feet. I assume you've heard the news. No, I have not been watching the news. Oh, really? Because apparently a girl died in detention this afternoon. And two students are facing the death penalty. You know what I think, Parker? I think you're behind all this. Th that's absurd. I didn't kill Ivy. Oh, so you do know who died. Well, that just proves you're a terrible liar. Shit, T, look! I just heard about it, okay? That's all I know. I, I don't know anything. I, I, I just heard about it, that's all. There's something else. Forensic analysis are analyzing the water that Ivy drank. Apparently it's some kind of concoction of poison. And somehow the police think that this is on par with the Cobra killings. T, I don't know what you're talking about. I assumed you were the one behind this. Ivy Bushel, she was not on our radar. And now that she's dead, this screws up our plan quite a bit. 
Thanks to you, my brother and I can't go anywhere near the school. And don't bother about the poison either. We know you took it. Look, T, we've been friends. Let's just talk about this for a second. Let's be reasonable here. Like, don't do anything rash. I'm afraid, Parker, that you are now a liability. And now we have to push you down. Sweet dream. No, 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 T, no, 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 no. We can talk about this, right? Please, 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 T, what?